elbow dislocations. The elbow is the second most common dislocated major joint in adults behind the shoulder. This video will focus on simple dislocations. This means there aren't other major injuries like broken bones. It will be important to review the pertinent anatomy of the elbow, the causes of simple dislocations, and how we treat these injuries. First, the anatomy. The elbow joint is a very interesting joint. It flexes and extends. It rotates. It is relatively small. It likes to get stiff. And sometimes it can even make extra bone. We call this heterotopic ossification. The elbow joint is made up of the humerus, the olecranon, and the radius. The configuration of these bones allows for a lot of stability throughout its range of motion. This means that there is a lot of bone contact supporting the joint as it does its activities. In flexion and extension, it is primarily the olecranon that is providing the stability. With side-to-side -side forces, the radius begins to help out. The bones of the elbow are the most important stabilizers overall, and with simple dislocations, the bones remain okay. This is important for our later treatment. I also want to point out that the position that the person has their forearm and elbow in plays a huge factor in the forces that the joint sees and the stability of the joint. One example of this is the carrying angle. The shape of the elbow bones are such that the elbow has a natural angle that goes away from the body when the elbow is extended and supinated. Makes it a little easier to carry things when you have your arm close to your body. This angle goes away when the elbow is pronated and or flexed. The next most important stabilizers after the bone are the ligaments that support the joint. The medial collateral ligament or MCL goes from the medial epicondyle, which is the bump you feel on the inside of your elbow, down to the ulna. The MCL is crucial to supporting your elbow to forces that may want to bring your elbow outwards from the body. We call this valgus. Classically, this is most stressed by activities such as throwing, but submissions like the Americana or the armbar, you can see my separate videos on these, can injure these structures as well. The lateral collateral ligament or LCL, which has multiple parts, goes from the lateral epicondyle, which is the smaller bump that you can feel on the outside of your elbow, down to the ulna. This structure provides support to forces that would bring your elbow inwards towards your body. We call this varus. And it prevents the radial head from dislocating out of the elbow joint. Other stabilizers of the elbow joint are the muscles around it. These include the forearm flexors and extensors, the biceps and brachialis muscles, and the triceps. These secondary stabilizers are very important. For example, the before mentioned throwing can generate forces that routinely exceed the amount of forces that the MCL can usually take. However, we often are throwing and our MCL doesn't always fail. Sometimes it does. But those forearm flexor muscles are able to provide enough dynamic support to the ligament to prevent injury. The joint capsule also helps out with stability in the elbow, especially in extension, and it also helps a little bit support against valgus forces. So back to the position of the forearm and elbow and how this is crucial to the stability of the elbow joint. The more flexed the elbow is, the more bone stability there is. As the elbow is extended, the more the soft tissues, the ligaments and muscles become important to elbow stability. When the forearm is supinated, the MCL and the muscles on the inside of the elbow provide the most stability. The LCL and muscles on the outside of the elbow become more important for stability with the forearm pronated. The greatest laxity or 
play in the elbow joint is when the forearm is in neutral rotation. Now, how the elbow dislocates. The vast majority of simple elbow dislocations occur from falls with the elbow extended and with weight going through the arm. We call it axial loading. This goes along with a valgus force being put through the elbow joint. The carrying angle combined with the shoulder being out from our body trying to catch our fall contribute to a more valgus force being put on the elbow. And then as that hand is planted, posted on the ground, there is external rotation or supination of the forearm that causes the last tissues to fail. There is debate on which structures are failing first. It would seem from a consensus of the literature that the medial structures fail first. Those forces then move anteriorly and finally the structures on the outside or lateral aspect of the elbow then fail. As those lateral structures fail, the radial head can then pop out of the elbow joint and the elbow joint dislocates. As discussed in one of my prior videos, the armbar can often result in an elbow dislocation. Dislocations from an armbar are obviously different from falls, but I believe that the underlying order of tissues being injured is similar. While there is not the axial loading or compression of the arm, there is still the combination of extension, really hyperextension, and valgus load going through the elbow. The form is often held in neutral by the attacker, and the fulcrum of the tack likely causes the same order of tissues to be injured from the inside, anteriorly, and then to the outside. Symptoms. What you feel when the elbow is dislocated. There's going to be immediate pain and an inability to move the elbow joint. There's usually a clear deformity of the elbow joint. It is very rare to injure nerves, or blood vessels with this injury, but it is always good to make sure things are working. If you have numbness, inability to move your fingers, or your fingers are starting to turn purple, it's an emergency. So the treatment, one should get the dislocated joint evaluated and put back into place, reduced as soon as possible. Go to the emergency room. They will be able to get x-rays to make sure that it is truly a simple dislocation and that the joint gets reduced after their procedure. The elbow is then usually placed into a splint to protect the reduction and allow for rest. But this prevention of motion should never exceed more than two to three weeks. Motion likely can be started much sooner if guided by a physical therapist. The rehabilitation. Motion is usually best started by eliminating gravity with overhead physical therapy protocols. This is done with the patient laying down and the shoulders brought in front of them. This position is beneficial as it minimizes the effect of gravity, decreases the forces that may cause a recurrent dislocation, and it allows the big triceps muscle to act as a stabilizer. The need for surgery. This is rare. This would be determined by a specialist when they get a thorough evaluation. Sometimes an MRI is necessary to really get a good look at the soft tissues. If the ligaments need to be repaired, they are often then protected for at least six weeks, but range of motion is started pretty early in this process to protect against stiffness. If it's not a simple dislocation, if there are fractures involved, certainly more often requires surgery. The long-term outcomes. I usually tell patients that you will notice that your elbow is different. This may mean that you lose a little bit of terminal extension. The last few degrees of extension might be missing. There might be a little bit of pain. That being said, well over 90% of the people who have this injury, a simple elbow dislocation, do totally fine without surgery. The most important thing, those that get their elbows moving early in a protected way tend to do better. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, board certified orthopedic surgeon, specialist in the arm. If you like these videos, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you.